This is a VFX breakdown of how I made this TikTok. Hey! Hey, I want to show you something. Okay. Get ready to catch. Catch? What? Whoa! Oh my gosh! Uh, do you want this back? Uh, yeah, try throwing it. You can follow along and learn how to make this video for yourself, or this can just be fun and interesting for you. Step one, the idea. So the idea comes from Portal, one of my favorite video games. I actually just replayed the story mode a couple weeks ago, and I highly recommend this game. So I grabbed my iPad and two tennis balls, and I was ready to film. I decided to film on my iPhone. Sometimes using a phone will give your video more of a social media authentic feel rather than a camera. The idea is simple. I'm gonna drop the tennis ball onto the iPad and Claire is gonna throw it back to me, kind of like the game Portal. This video is also part of Kevin Perry's social media VFX theme that he does every month. If you don't know who Kevin Perry is, he is a professional animator who also does VFX on TikTok and Instagram. He's super talented, you have to check him out. This month's theme was the tennis ball. So the thing that makes my video impressive is the perfect loop. Without the loop, this is just a good match cut and it's not that great. Step two, shoot the video. Often the hardest part of VFX is getting the shot right. You're going to shoot your video and you're going to fail and you're gonna reshoot your video and you're going to fail again. But every time you fail, you're going to learn something different and that is how you're going to succeed. This is always the process, but it's also what makes making VFX videos so much fun. There's always visual puzzles you have to solve in After Effects, and often it just comes down to how much you actually do want to solve in After Effects, or if you want to try and get the most perfect take. So here's the take. Starting with the loop in mind, I throw the ball up in the air and catch it. I grab the iPad and bring it to the floor so I can set up for the ball drop. I drop the ball on the iPad, move the ball out of the way, Clara pretends to catch the ball, and then the throw and the catch. Pretty straightforward, there's one more clip that we need to film though. In this clip, I'm just gonna throw the ball in the air and use it as reference for my edit. Step three, editing. We're gonna open up the good old After Effects. Let's start by trimming the start of our footage and create a new composition. Now that we have a new composition, let's take a look at our first effect. So here we're gonna create a match cut. A good match cut consists of three constant attributes, composition, exposure and color, and motion. Our goal is to manipulate the three attributes so that it looks as close as possible. So we do this by starting with a rough cut. So starting with our first attribute, we have composition. In my case, I need to scale up and rotate the iPads so that they match up together. I start by enabling keyframing and locking in those default values. And where the match cut happens, I adjust the position, rotation, and scale so that they match together. I want this to be as close as possible. Now what we should have is the layer slowly animates into the position that we'd like. That's looking great, I'm just going to add a single frame blend between the two. To do this, I'm going to hit T for opacity and create a 0% keyframe and a 100% keyframe, leaving me with a single frame transition between the first clip to the second clip. Now one problem here is my thumb. I could put in a little bit more work to remove my thumb, but I think in this case I'm just going to leave it as my thumb is in motion and the attention is on the tennis ball. The next thing is exposure and color. If you're using a camera, you can lock in your white balance and exposure, so this shouldn't really be much of an issue. But because I was using my phone, I was using automatic white balance, so this is going to require a little bit more matching. I used Lumetri to keyframe my temperature, tint, exposure, and contrast to try and get it to look as much like the other clip as possible. Now I do this all by eye. You can do this with waveform and scopes, but I prefer just to use my eye. I find it works a little bit better. And now for our third attribute, motion. In this case, the ball travels from one clip to the next, and there really isn't much for me to do here. So that's good. So now moving on to the throw. The timing is everything. If you get it wrong, you'll have to reshoot or find a way to fix it in post. In my case, the timing was off and I decided to fix it in post. I needed the throw to be about one second later. So there's two ways I could have solved this. One, I could have sped up a portion of the clip so that the timing would have worked together, or I could retime the iPad. In my case, I chose to retime the iPad, so I started by masking the iPad and manually tracked it for about 30 frames, so one second. This track only required 13 keyframes. Remember, your keyframes are there to animate. You don't have to do every frame. Just enough for the computer to be able to fill in the rest. Now I'm going to pre-compose and do a rough position track to the center. This doesn't need to be too precise as we're going to corner pin track back to the iPad later. We just want this to be relatively centered. Now that that's looking good, we're going to crop to region of interest and hop back into our main composition. Now there's two parts to this layer. One part being the ball being thrown 
the other part being the extension of time that we need to add. Let's start with the throw. I'm going to find where I want the throw to happen and position my pre-comp there. And now I'm just going to give this a rough position track to the iPad. Now that we have a rough track, we can start being more precise. Let's add the corner pin effect and enable keyframing. Now I'm going to start going frame by frame, matching the corners of the screen back to the iPad. The way I like to do this is I start with a broad stroke. I'll do the first keyframe and the last keyframe and three or four in between there. And then I start a second pass where I go in between those keyframes and then a third pass where I go in between those keyframes, eventually working my way down to almost frame by frame. I do this until my track looks the way that I want it to. I'll typically do this step with motion blur enabled so that I can get a more precise outcome. Now for the extension, I'm going to duplicate the pre-comp, open it up and add a freeze frame on the first frame. I'm gonna delete all the position and scale keyframes in the pre-comp so we just have a still frame. Now back to the main comp and we're gonna do a rough manual track to the iPad. And now I'm gonna repeat the corner pin process of motion tracking the screen back onto the iPad. That's looking pretty good. Now we can move on to the throw. I'm going to grab the clip of me throwing the ball, put it in reverse and mask out the ball. This part is pretty simple. I'm just gonna create a circle mask using the ellipse tool and manually keyframe about 20 frames. Don't forget to use your feather and expand mask settings. So in this case, I only used six frames from the clip and use a freeze frame to animate the part of the ball coming out of the iPad. Now for the loop, the thing that makes this video worth liking. We're going to grab our clip from the beginning, duplicate it and drag it to the end. Remember, we want our first frame to be the same as our last frame, creating a perfect loop. That might sound confusing, but I promise this will make sense. So let's find the time where I'd catch the ball and we'll create our match cut there. So just like before, we want to make sure that our composition is constant, as well as our color and exposure, but most importantly here is motion. I'll start by positioning and scaling the clip so that the background looks as close to the other clip as possible, and I'll keyframe it back to normal at the last frame. In this scenario, we can get away with quite a bit more because the camera is in motion. And now we just want to set the last frame in the composition. So we just want to pull our out point to the same frame of the in point. So you see here, my last frame is the same as my first frame. And that's it. Once it's looking good, you can hit export and there's your video. Hey, hey I want to show you something. Get ready to catch. Catch what? Whoa! Oh my gosh! Uh, do you want this back? Uh, yeah. Try throwing it. Sure. Holy cow! That was an edit and a half. If this is a video you liked, let me know down in the comments below because I would love to do more stuff like this. I just got to come up with some more VFX ideas. I thought this would be a good idea to juggle while I'm doing my outro. Thanks for watching. If you like this, hit subscribe, hit that like button, and I will see you in the next video. Let's see if that sucked. Hey, hey I want to show you something. Okay. Get ready to catch. Catch? Whoa. Oh my gosh. Uh, do you want this back? Uh, yeah, try throwing it.